Okay guys, Dolly here. Welcome back to Gypsy Rose Papery. Today, um, I wanted to share with you a tutorial. And so, this for some of you will be very sort of beginner's type, like a beginner's type tutorial. Um, so, just for warning you ahead of time, it's probably not going to be very interesting. If you are advanced level so uh, my hope with this is that it'll be the first of a series in which I take you through me doing one of my design team projects for Tsunami Rose for um, the month of November I'm doing a Christmas junk journal and the reason why I decided to wait this long and to doing tutorials and such is because one I'm fairly new. I feel like I started to do um, junk journals in December. My very first junk journal was a Christmas junk journal. So for me, I feel like this is full circle. So I'm back to doing, you know, a Christmas junk journal. And I feel like I'm at a place where I can explain things in a way that makes sense to everybody. Um, and so this is the first of a series. If you see here in front of me, and if you saw the title, today we are going to learn how to make book board. And that might seem like sort of, well, kind of simple. But believe it or not, when I first started, I had no clue that anything called book board even existed. Um, I used packaging or cardboard from packaging to make my covers and it was one complete package that I would fold in three sections and make a book type thing and that's how I made my my books in the beginning so right now I'm just going to show you how to make book board because I'm sure that I can't be the only one out there who had no clue what the heck book board was or how you even could make it I went out and bought it I bought book board from we are memory keepers on Amazon and it was eight dollars for about two sheets this big. So, as you can see, this is just regular cardboard. And so this is um, the back of like um, forms. So I work at a hospital and we have, you know, hospital forms and behind each form there's this um, part. So instead of um, letting the secretary throw it out, I always ask her just to save them for me and I bring them home. So this is what I used to make book board. But if you don't work anywhere where there's any kind of forms, back of notebooks works really well. You could even use the cover of composition notebooks. You'd have to just really distress anything shiny like composition notebooks. You have to distress really well so that it glues well. You can make book board out of that. Basically, book board is several layers of cardboard glued together to make a nice, sturdy, thick base for fabric or whatever else you're going to put on there. So we're going to go through the steps of making book board. So if you want to follow along, go get your, this is the same kind of cardboard as in the cereal boxes. Just have to kind of scratch the shiny surface so that you can glue and it can adhere. So let's get my paper cutter out and I have a huge paper cutter. Um, I don't even know if it'll fit into frame but I'll do my best um, so basically the first thing you have to decide is what size do you want your book to be you're gonna want to be able to cut six total nine by six squares so we're gonna cut those out um, and I'll just measure here with you so that you can see that's nine so nine across. And then six across. So basically to leave myself half an inch around on top and on the bottom. Okay. You're going to want to cut out six of these. So go ahead and cut out six of these and I'll see you right back. Okay. So once you have all your buckboard cut out, we're going to glue them together. Um, 
And so if you use kind of like the 8x11 sheets of cardboard like I had, like from the back of a notebook, you should have left over two size, two um, scraps in the sizes. One of them being um, 9 by 2 and a half across. So this is going to be my spine and I'll need three of these. If not, you can cut um, your own size spine, whatever size you want, as long as it's um, 9 long, 9 inches long to fit the length of your front and back cover. Um, so we'll glue these together. Um, and I like to use fabric tack. Um, and why do I like fabric tack? I like fabric tack because I have used many different glues, Aileen's, um, Mod Podge, just any glue you can imagine. This dries fast and it doesn't warp, it doesn't seep into your paper or cardstock and it, um, will not warp your paper. So that's why I like to use fabric tack and it's a really um, strong uh, adhesion. So with fabric tack a little goes a long way. So my thing is I like to do the edges first and just stay just far away enough from the edge so that when you sandwich um, it's not gonna seep past the edge there. And then you kind of want to do just use across the page. You just want to make sure you, doesn't have to be every square in. Um, you kind of just want to get it as much of the page set through as possible. And so then we're going to... Make sure that your edges are all aligned with each other. And then once they are, you just kind of want to press. And I'm sorry that my camera right now is probably jumping all over. Kind of just want to make sure it adheres well. Any glue running through the side, you just want to run it off with your finger. But you just want to put uniform pressure across to make sure there's good contact. Okay. And so you want to get the other layer on too. And so it's a total of three layers for the back and the front. <clears throat> or rather six three for three and three each side and again you just want to make sure that all the sides align and there, if there's a little bit of, like, an, like if some one of the sides comes out a little bit more than the other, don't worry because we're going to cover this. So you're not going to be able to see that um, as long as it's as well aligned as you can get it. And this is your book board. And so just so you can see the difference. Okay. And it feels really soft right now, but when this dries, it creates oh, two hard layers in between each cardboard layer, and it'll be really rigid. Um, and I will show you that in the next tutorial when we cover it with, we're gonna do fabric. So, or at least I'm going to do fabric for my um, DT project. I mean, you could do paper. I've never done paper on the book board. I've only ever used 
fabric but I don't see why you couldn't I mean I would think you would need some kind of sealant on the paper so that it wouldn't crack or um, rip or something probably like Mod Podge over it I just would be too careful about um, saturating the book board um, because then you're gonna start to get warping and, and the reason I'm saying that is because I have done Mod Podge on um, my book board before most recently and I did have an issue with um, the warping and it was it was a headache it was a headache to fix so just something you'd want to keep in mind so yeah so you just glue your other set of book board and just make sure it's aligned and again on your hand get on the excess glue off and you running your hand also creates a seal on the edge if there is excess glue um, and that will help keep it intact okay and so you'll notice that right off the bat it's gonna be flat and you just you can put something over it um, I don't I just let it be um, you can also get your spine ready if you've got those cut if not you want to pause that and do it with me you can um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my spine ready so same premise you're just gonna want to put glue all around the perimeter of the spine and don't worry about like any kind of integrity issues or anything with the spine because the spine is really just for cover purposes there's nothing it's gonna get poked through this spine so this is um, kind of like the show spine and then we're gonna have a hidden spine where we're going to um, actually sew the signatures through and so that's a hidden spine method and it's the only method I've ever used with books I've never actually sewn signatures through the actual spine unless it's on one of my TNs or one of my earlier books where I was just using the thin cardboard um, I would not recommend trying to poke holes through this spine because it's very thick and you, once this glue dries it's almost like a resin consistency um, and it'll be very hard I would think I mean you could certainly try it um, but yeah so that is our spine so we've got our two front and back covers and our spine and so on our next one our next tutorial I'll show you guys how to get these together to make an actual book cover and also how to add decorative elements to the spine such as ledges okay I'll see you in the next one bye